Hi guys, so I've said in the past how Brexit is twofold. One aspect of Brexit is immigration, to keep the racists happy basically. The other is disaster capitalism. The idea that you sign trade deals with countries around the world where you can then lower your environmental protections, you can lower your in, um, animal welfare standards, worker protections, food standards as well. And that's what's going to happen, it seems, um, as part of the Australian trade deal. But the Australian tr uh, trade deal is just one, one of many that are going to come along over the next number of years. You're going to hear from Sir Roger Gale, who's, uh, who was speaking on behalf of the UK Trade and Business Commission. He was speaking to Times Radio about some of the issues that are going to be uh, on the horizon regarding these trade deals and how the Australian one is just the first of many that are going to impact standards in the UK, which will, of course, as I said before, affect those at the bottom of the scale most. Let's hear what he had to say. The danger is that this is a precedent. And as has been said, we're looking at Australia, uh, we're looking at America, we're looking at South America, where standards are very different. And what we don't want is to see our very high animal welfare standards diminished. And we certainly don't want to see products containing elements that we would not allow in the United Kingdom imported. You'll notice that when Dimitri was talking, he said very carefully, if it is safe for consumption, and that is what Liz Truss has been saying, we're going to make sure it is safe for consumption. That says nothing about animal welfare. Yeah. All that says is it's safe to eat. It's quite a low bar, that, isn't it? It is a low bar. I mean, exactly. obviously, obviously, we'd hope that nobody was going to be able to sell anything and which wasn't safe. Looking downstream, and, and, you know, we're talking 15 years ahead, but looking down, but our job, of course, is to make sure that we see the elephant traps now that we might fall into 15 years ahead. And that's what, why Parliament needs to take a look at this, because it won't just be the high, the top end cuts of beef. Our farmers produce the best beef in the world. And I have no, no problem whatsoever with believing that they will do very nicely, thank you, under any circumstances, because the meat, beef is so good. It's the bottom end of the market. It's the, um, the processed meats. The stuff that goes into, you know, I don't know, min, uh, mincemeat and, and, and stuff that goes into hot pots and all the things that are served, not at the top end, but in schools, in hospitals, in other institutions, where you may well find that stuff containing things that we would not allow are included. And unless the checks are very rigid in Australia, and they won't be, for why should they be, then we are in real danger of importing things that we wouldn't allow in the United Kingdom. And I think that's a great concern. That's another reason why I think this has to be scrutinised properly. OK, so there are a lot, there's a lot to unpack there, of course. So you talked about the future and how what's happening now with the Australian trade deal will affect trade deals in the future. Um, the United States, South America, where standards are lower. And of course, he also mentioned about how um, animal welfare standards will not be included because, as he said, and his, uh, the other guest had said, this is about f consumption. Is it safe for consumption? This does not refer in any way to animal standards, animal welfare standards. This is something that is really depressing about Brexit as well. The UK used to be a shining light in the world. The UK used to be one who was setting high standards. The UK used to be one who was progressing further and further up the scale. Brexit is the opposite of that. It's about regressing. It's about going backwards, not going forwards. Animal welfare standards are going to be reduced. Um, food standards are going to be reduced. As he said, at the top end, the rich are going to be able to eat the good meat. The poor are going to be eating, as he said, the hot pots or um, the low quality food. And that has always been an aspect of Brexit. The ones who will not be affected are the rich. The ones who will be affected are the poor, of course. And finally, of course, about uh, Parliament. Parliament needs to scrutinise this. But unfortunately, Parliament's powers have continually been reduced. And 
I think really Brexit has been the catalyst here. Boris Johnson does not treat Parliament with respect. I uploaded a video recently where the Speaker of the House went on a bit of a rant about this, how Boris Johnson is running roughshod over Parliament. He's not there to answer questions. He's not, uh, he's going to the media before he's actually speaking to Parliament, you know, rendering Parliament pretty much useless. Uh, and this is not by accident. I think this is definitely by design. So going forward, it seems that the UK wants to reduce animal welfare standards, reduce environmental protections, reduce uh, workers' rights in regards to these trade deals. Because whatever the UK signs with Australia or the United States is going to be emulated in the UK. Um, and the Tories are, don't care about animal welfare standards. The Tories don't care. I'm not talking about individual MPs. Uh, Roger Gale actually cares about some of these issues. He is a conservative, but the party itself does not care about the environment and animal welfare and certainly not workers' rights. And they see this as an opportunity to engage in this disaster capitalism. Someone is benefiting from this and someone is definitely paying a huge price. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?